Namaste. Welcome to the Atharva Forum. In this Atharva conversation, we have Sriman Sayat Mitra, a scholar who is also a performing artist. He plays the Rudra Veena and is trained in Dhrupad style of vocal music. He has a master's in Tagore literature and is currently pursuing master's in musicology. He is actively engaged in reconstructing the Natya tradition of Bharata, including its music and instruments. Today, we will discuss one specific aspect of it, the ancient Indian music based on dramas and jatis, with the aid of Mattapokila, an ancient veena made of 21 strings, and how this system relates to the more ancient Samaganam, as well as the extant Raga-based system of music. Before we proceed with the conversation, please subscribe to our channel. I welcome Sriman Sayak Mitra to the Atharva Forum. Pranam. Namo Namaha. Namo Namaha. I would like you to explain to us how music plays an important role in Bharata's Natya tradition and what he says about music, Sangeetam, in his Natya Shastram as well as the commentaries based on his work. The basic thing of Natya Shastraic music has two different parts. We can distinguish as a one part is Gandharva, another is Gana. Now the Gandharva, this is applicable in Purvaranga also. And also this is to understand the science of music. Not only we can say Indian music, the total periphery of music, if you want to know what is music, how the swaras, the notes came, how we can understand plagal scale and all that. This is there in Gandharva. So from 28th chapter to the 33 chapters, the whole uh, chapter is based on Tala and this Gandharva Sangeeta, Vidhis and also the Dhrubhagan. In case of Natya, if you want to say the music in Natya, so then Bharata mentioned music in Natya means you have to apply exactly the Dhruba Gaan. So Gaan and the Gandharva, there are a very clear difference. Gandharva is to understand the music system and Gaan is for the performance. In fact, in uh, Purvaranga also, Bharata mentioned the um, Asarita Vardhamana Vidhi, when you are performing, when you are presenting Asarita Vardhamana Vidhi, you have to present it in Choksha Shadava Gram Rag or Shuddha Shadava Gram Rag. So this Shuddha Shadava or Choksha Shadava, this is Gram Rag. This is not any Jati. So in case of Gandharva, if you distinguish properly which parts are Gandharva, in case uh, of Gandharva, you will get first the structure of two different grammars, Shadja and Madhyama. Then you will get the Murchanas, Tanas, Alamkaras, all that. Then it's coming gradually, the Jati structure. The total 18 Jatis, there are 7 Shuddha Jati and 11 Samkirna or Mishrita Jati. Is a combination of two or three jatis and it's create new jati. So like this way, this is the chronology of jati you will get. These, from this part, you will get the Gandharva tradition. From here, it's derived towards the Gram Raga. And when the Gram Ragas are coming, from there, you will get the Gana concept. Kapala Gana, Kambola Gana, few spaces they mentioned Kapal Geet also, Kambol Geet. But the connotation of Geet is a little different in case of Bharata. Geeti or Geet is different and Ganam is different. So in case of Natya, the Praveshiki, Naishkramiki, Akshipi, Akshakipiki, Prasadiki, Antara, this kind of five Dhruba Gan is applicable in Natya. So some character is taking entry, you require a music, you require a gana, you can compose a gana, you can compose a musical piece also. Maybe 
Dushant is uh, taking entry in Tapovana. So maybe you don't require song there. Better it's leather instruments we can play. We can play the string few notes only. Before that, Ishata Ishata Chumbitani, you can make this shlokam as a Sangeeta. And the, the, this happening when? It's happening in the Grishma. So Shadava is for Varsha. So you have to choose another rag for Grishma. So which Gram rag is suitable in Grishma that you can put and you can compose your own song. So if you compare with today's classical music, then we have to put maybe Vrindavani Saran of North India. So then you can you can get a Mridula Mridula Chumbitani. So Ishata Ishata Chumbitani Brahma Rai. So with this rhythm, the uh, with Rat, the um, Dushant is taking entry in stage. So this is the pra Praveshiki Dhruva. Like this way, Praveshiki, when character is going out, Naishkramiki, the Nati in a peak situation. That is prasadiki. This kind of few sequences are there, few situations are there in Natya where you can put this gana, and this ganam you can compose in raga. In the time of Bharata, Bharata mentioned you can compose it in gram raga because raga means where the ranjakatva is there. So to uh, you know the properly elaborate an particular emotion, a particular emotion, you require Ranjakatva. But Gandharva, the Jati and all this Murchana, Tana, all this practice, these are not for Ranjakatva. The purpose of Ranjakata is not here. It's not for entertainment. But to create a situation, you can apply these Gramaragas. Maybe the root is Gandharva. So we can't say it's coming from Gandharva. Better we say the science or the background behind all this Ganam is Gandharva. If you understand Gandharva properly, you can understand the letter music properly. So like, so that's why Gandharva is so important in Bharata's tradition. So this is the Natya music. In case of Purvaranga also Bharata mentioned, you can apply Gramaraga. But that is Tuti Mulak Pada you have to apply. You can apply the Shiva Stuti. You can apply the, according to your Natya, uh, Vishnu Stuti. You can do like this way. If your Natya is based on Vaishnava philosophy, like you are presenting Bhanika, which is based on maybe you can compose it in on Jayadeva's Gita Govinda. So you can put the Purvaranga in uh, Vishnu Stuti. You can put Jaya Jaya Deva Hare as a Vishnu Stuti. You can compose according to Meghrag or like that. So this uh, is this liberty is here. So Gandharva is giving you a structure, a Vyakarana of music, the grammar. And in case of Natya, Bharata is giving you a liberty. You know the grammar. Now you, you are free. You can compose according to your Natya. So Bharata is guiding to create a composer, a singer. And also a wholesome Natya person who can understand the music of Natya. So like this way, his, his indication is there in Natya Shastra. Thank you. Thank you for this explanation. But uh, there are lots of terms which are new for us. At present, uh, it's rare for people to even know the Raga system properly. So the Grama and Jati system is almost alien, sounds alien to us. So could you tell us more, maybe through a demonstration as to what a grama is, maybe what Shadja grama sounded like and how it was understood and heard and maybe a jati, how did, how did a jati sound like? So that we get a feel of how he might have executed it in the Natya tradition. Sure, I can explain that and uh... One of my Satirtha, Shubhendu Ghosh, he will demonstrate the grammars, how we tuned the grammar, how we reconstructed the instrument and the instrument you can see here. So I'm explaining one by one. 
first the swara how we get the swaras of bharata so this is the matta kokila veena now the thing is matta kokila this veena you can't get in natya shastra like this way you will get the matta kokila nomenclature and the structure of the these veena in abhinava gupta's commentary matta kokila is 21 string and this 21 string is three septet is here mandra madhya and tar so first we have to find out the shadja now in today's concept people used to ask which scale we have to take if you want to take g or you, you if you are taking d c which scale so this scale concept it came far later according to each and every instrument they have a parameter of tuning or strength of a string according to that we will get a tension in the string that much tension is enough for the shadja so like this way once upon a time people used to tune their instrument the big and bigger instrument means the tonality is a little mandra low and the small instrument means the tonality is sharp till today is like that rudra veena is a big instrument but the sound is very low and very deep sound and sitar is a small instrument but the sound is very sharp based on the structure the sounds used to come so here in this veena first we have to find out the shadja so where we can get so first we used to tune the mid septet madhya saptaka shadja so the first we tuned it in sa so from the beginning how many strings we are six string we are leaving and we are getting after 16 the seventh one is the shadja so first we have to understand how we can tune it so the relation between which swara to which swara like which is the harmony swara in a total septet that we have to understand bharata mentioned the relation between shadja madhyama shadja panchama is the basic relation or basic structure of gandhar before going that we have to understand what does it mean by gandharva a few used to say the this is a for the spiritual perspective uh, but how what is the spirituality of this gandharva bharata mentioned in 28th chapter it's a swara tala padatmakam gandharvam iti tajgeyam swara tala padatmakam so swara tala and pada notes rhythm and the lyrics till today is surviving if you see any song if you see go for the any hindi song also you will get all these things so is it enough is it enough to understand gandharva or this is only the purpose of gandharva if you see there are the swara tala and pada that means this is gandharva so swara tala and pada is everywhere then exactly in the next karika bharata is telling atyartham ishta devanam tatha priti karam punah so it's not only the swara tala and pada that swara tala and pada and the combination is for atyartham ishta devana to please the gods tatha priti karam puna and also this is very entertaining it's madhura we can't say the word entertaining we can say it's madhura it's suitable when you are listening so that's why the harp sound or the matta kokila veena sound is totally different the sound of veena always is a low always is very subtle so this subtle sound please god and till today we are finding this process, uh, music we are finding the uh, this uh, salvation with this music and all that all the musician they are trying to reach in that point so how in the in this process we used to tune so shadja madhyama shadja panchama sangvaditya sa to ma distance 
according to muni it's nine shruti nava shruti so sa ri ga ma in between the distance is nine shruti then sa to pa panchama is the distance is 13 shruti sa ri ga ma pa so first we can tune sa ma and sa pa if we have tuned uh, one string in sa then we have to leave two string for re and ga and we have to tune the fourth string as ma how Now the sa and pa, shadja pancha. This is very much clear. We got three swaras, sa, ma and pa. Now how the raised notes we can get? We have to assume ma as a sa. The madhyama ma. I am taking ma as sa, 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 and from this madhyama, in the in the string of nishad, I am uttering another ma, sa ma, sa ma. So we are getting nishad. So sa ma, taking ma as a sa and uttering another ma, I am getting the nishad. How? Sa ma, sa ma. Again, sa ma, sa ma. The notes are sa ma, ma ni. This nishad is dvishruti nishad because from the madhyama to the nishad, the distance is also nine shruti. So wherever in this column we will get nine shruti nine shruti distance, that means they are in the relation of sa ma. So sa ma mani and sa pa. So that means sa ma pani four notes we already get. So we got four notes. Now we have to tune from this nishad, this shruti nishad, in a descending manner. If we utter another madhyama. And it's coming to the string of Gandhar. Again. So, Sa Nidapama Sa Ma Sa Ma So, what we are getting? We are getting Gandhar. So, this Gandhara is also the Shruti Gandhar. So, Sa, then ma, ma to ni, this all coming in uh, ascending order, sa and pa. From nishad, we are getting in a descending order one madhyama, that is sa, ma, which is gandhar. So the notes are. Sa, ga, ma, pa, ni. Now the no one, two dif different notes are waiting for us, and which is Bharata mentioned. This is the Tishruti notes. That is Rishabha and Dhaivata. This Rishabha and Dhaivata, how to tune? See, exactly like Shadja Madhyama Sambad. Shadja Panchama Sangvad, there are another Sangvad which is Shadja Gandhara Sambad. Today we used to say this is Antara Gandhara. Or in North India, from the perspective of Ahobal, we used to say Shuddha Gandhara. So this Saga relation and Madha relation is same. If you utter Madhyama as a Sa, you will get a Gandhara in Dhaivata. If you tune a uh, tanpura in madhyama and if you pluck the string properly the resonation touch that dhaivata and come back so this is the touching point is dhaivata and that dhaivata is the shruti dhaivata so 
ma dha we have to tune like this way sa ga sa ga you can't sing sa ga sa ga see the shruti is, is raising you can't sing ga you better you have to sing sa ga sa ga it's not stable so exactly this is ma dha this dhaivata is not stable muni mentioned all the three shruti swara they are trying to reach two or four they want wants wants to be two or four they have no idea to take this position they can't stay in that position that's why they oscillate they oscillate between two and four so that's why all the tishruti swara has this oscillation kampana abhinava gupta mentioned properly this thing so the rishabha now we have to get at exactly how we got the nishada to gandhara we, have, we can get the dhaivata to rishabha now this tishruti dhaivata this kampamana dhaivata if we take as sa we will get in a descending manner in the string of rishabha the ri sa ma distance sa ma sa ma sa ni da pa ma sa ma but both are not stable swara they are oscillating so now we got the seven notes like sa ni ga ma pa da ni ni na pa ma ga re sa these seven notes are shadjagrama's seven notes the sapta swara of shadjagrama if you see you can see the sama sapa is four shruti four shruti so shrutis are the microtones who hold a note by with in who bound who actually bind the note properly the notes based on the shrutis so exactly that is 22 shrutis in these 22 shrutis four shruti we have to take for shadja four shruti for madhyama four shruti for panchama now the next is rishaba and there is dhaivata both are three shruti three shruti three three shrutis then the gandhara and nishada the two and two so if you put the madhyama in the center you will get sa ri ga ma is nabhi or middle pa dhani so sa and pa four shruti four shruti ri and dha three shruti three shruti ga and ni two shruti two shruti four three two four four three two so it's a very balanced harmony in shadja grama we can get so that's why muni mentioned madhyama is the avinashi swara we can't ignore madhyama we can't omit madhyama anyhow we, we maybe we are making shadava roopa audava roopa anything we are doing we can't omit madhyama so this is the structure of shad chakrama and here we can see the murchanas better we can see all the murchanas of shad chakrama here first then we can go for the tuning of madhyama krama so first the all the seven notes has seven different different murchana uttar mandra rajani uttarayata शुद्ध षडजा मत्सरीकृता आश्वक्रांत आश्वक्रांत सो लाइक अविरुद्ध गता सो लाइक दिस वे द सेवन डिसेंडिंग मैनर दे आर कमिंग लाइक वी आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम उत्तर मंद्रा व्हिच इज सा देन रजनी द फर्स्ट नोट वी हैव टू टेक एज नी देन उत्तरायता द फर्स्ट नोट वी हैव टू टेक एज धा so dha is the first note ni is the first note so we are not going sa is the first note then re is the first note no sa is the first note then ni then dha why from here we have to understand this veena is actually a descending playing manner is going from low to the like this way that means a descending way 
So in descending way means sa ni da pa. So like this way it comes. So this is the process of going gradually to lower pitch. So upper pitch to the lower pitch. Tar saptak to the madhya to the mandra. Like this way it goes. So that's why this vina is the, the murchana system, whatever Muni mentioned, this is also like from upper to the lower, from sharja to nishad, like this we are going to the rishabha. So we can understand exactly the playing technique was depends on dependent on these vinas. So these all the uh, vina like vipanchi, matta kokila, Chitra, all these Venas are for this descending manner playing and that's why the Murchanas are also descending way. And also the Murchana comes from the Murcha Dhatu. Murcha means going faint. So fainting is the mood, uh, the basic Artha. So the main meaning. So that's why the Swaras are going to Murcha, going to faint. So that's why this is the uh, terminology they used, Murchana. And now how to play, we are showing. First is Uttar Mandra. Then Rajani. Uttarayata. Shuddh Shadja. Matsarikrita Ashwakranta and last is Abhirudgata so you can see each and every note we can take as sa so Sa ni dha pa ma ga re. When you are playing ni dha pa ma ga re sa, you can take ni as a sa. If you utter ni as a sa, your risha will be changed. The shruti of risha will be changed. You will get little bit Shankara Varanam or Bilaval type of thing from Rajani Murchana. So, all this process, all the notes you can take as a sa, that means it's a transposed process. So that's why no need to understand the scale exactly that full orchestra can tune in one scale. Because anyone in this orchestra, maybe his uh, um, instrument is in different scale, he can take any swara as a sa and can play the instrument in the orchestra. So this is totally transposed system process. And this transposed system is a very unique system in India that no one is sa. Everyone is sa. Uh, if you know, if you can understand what is shadja, that is the ultimate thing. So the shadjatva is not a very easy thing. So that's why the shadja, the uh, mother of six swara, is shadja, and every swara is the reflection of shadja. So that's why you can take all the swara as a sa. So this is the uh, shadja grama murchana. So. Uh, we want to play some uh, Tanam, Shadavatanam or Odavatanam here. So in Shadja Grama, the Shadavatana, we can do the omit by omitting Sa, which is very difficult. Omitting Sa in today's concept is not possible. But Muni mentioned you can omit Sa, but you can't omit Ma. Madhyama is the basic Nabhi. So you can't omit Madhyama, the core of the Gandharva. But you can omit Sa, you can omit Pa also. Totally opposite of today's any concept of music. We can't omit Shadja or Panchama in today's any uh, type of concept. Panchama maybe we can omit in, in, uh, in few ragas, but Shadja is impossible. So here we can omit Shadja and we can sing a Tana, Shadava Tana. Nida pa ma ga re da pa ma ga re ni pa ma ga re ni da ma ga re ni da pa ga re Ni da pa ma ga 
the thing is you can count eight, 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 eight. So how we can count the tala? If you want an eight bit count, then you have to play chat chat puta tala. I'm not explaining too much the tala. I'm just showing the tala because if we want to explain tala, it, it requires a total another interview based on tala only because this tala system is totally out of our any preconceived notion. So this tala is a little difficult. So I'm just showing. First, I'm showing the chat chat puta tala and then I will show sing with this tala so in chachat putaha you will get nishkram samya nishkram tal samya pravesh nishkram samipa so in between all these sounded and unsounded actions you require to utter pancha lagu akshara kal like so this is the fastest layer of eight count according to Bharata's Gandharva system. So in this layer, if we put this murchana, and then we can see. Tan, Shadavatana. So if you can sing, we have to sing with this. I'm just showing two or three lines only. to do the tala and we have to practice so this is a only one tala i am explaining only in chachat puta we are doing if we uh, want to do in chacha puta it will be different because chacha puta has six beat and that beat beating process when sounded and unsounded process is different then thus here we don't get any pause again and again again and again you have to play nida pama gare da pama gare any like this because it's a shadavatan each and every sounded unsounded action you have to put all the swaras so like this way this is the practice of gandharva parampara this actually is the practice of gandharva parampara first you have to understand tala you have to tune your own instrument you have to play it you have to sing it so it's, it was a big orchestra in Bharata's tradition. It was a huge orchestra where this kind of all Venas, Matta Kokila, Ghosha, Vipanchi, Chitra, all, all were there. Tri Pushkara Baba there was, was uh, were there, like uh, Urdhaka, Alinga, Ankika. In that Vina, Anga Vina with Upanga Vina, the Kachapi, all these Vinas are there. Kachapi is a such Vina which can produce the Gamakas, these Kampanas we can get from the Kachapi. 
सो कच्छपे इज जस्ट लुक्स लाइक अ स्मॉल सरोद और रबाब इट्स लिटिल डिफरेंट द कच्छपी यू कैन गेट इन अजंता और लॉट्स ऑफ सेवरल स्कल्पचर्स इन सेवरल डायनेस्टी द कच्छपी वीणा सो एंड आल्सो दिस matak uh, mataku uh, kila or the maximum used to see the vipanchi veena in the maximum sculptures and also alapini or the ghosha is a very popular was a very popular veena till medieval century so like this way you will get a huge you can understand a huge orchestra was there and for the natya nothing you can you can you can distinguish that this instrument i is not uh, i can't put it in natya because this is a deshi instrument is it's not bharata's tradition bharata mentioned you can if you need some instrument from desha from loka which is applicable for exactly this scene exactly to present this emotion or this situation of this play you have to take this it's not have any boundary that this is not a marga instrument that's the way i am not taking yes there are not a such thing so not is a pervasive thing it's a broader and open minded thing was there in natya so this is the shardjagrama in uh, process of tuning shardjagrama playing shardjagrama murchana i mentioned like tana there are the alamkaras so so shubendu can play few alamkaras just as a demonstration so you can see this is a type of alamkara all these alamkaras are for practicing the fingering on a harp it actually like today when we used to practice rudra veena we don't practice raga much we first we practice the murchana and the basic tana process basically rudra veena we have to practice lots of murchanas so sa 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 ri ga ma pa da ni sa sa ni da pa ma ga ri sa ni sa ri ga ma pa da ni ni da pa ma ga ri sa ni da ni sa ri ga ma pa da da pa ma ga ri sa ni da so like this way each and every raga we have to take and we have to practice the murchana in veena in vocal also in drupad so this is the practice to tone yourself so these all the alamkaras tanas all these are for for a toning Uh, toning process is of gandharva this is so this is the shardjagrama now i am shifting to the madhyamagrama how we can get madhyamagrama what is the tuning process of madhyamagrama how to tune the shardjagrama how to what are the uh, playing techniques and how to play in the tala chat chat puta mm. in uh, shardjagrama so now we are uh, shifting to the madhyamagrama so madhyama grama is a, a little bit tricky thing is there so the relation between sapa breaking here so the relation between sapa is 13 shruti the relation between sama is 9 shruti so 13 shruti 13 shruti distance like from in shardjagrama if you see you can get sa to pa is 13 shruti re to dha if you take re as a sa and dha as a pa that is also 13 shruti ga and ni also 13 shruti so maximum 13 shruti 13 shruti distance are there and that is the sa pa distance so that's why the muni mentioned that grama in the name of shardja grama here he is breaking that thing and he is putting shardja madhyama samvad maximum all the tuning is exactly like shardjagrama if you if you have to tune sa to ma ma to ni ni to ga ma to dha dha to re in spite of sa to pa tuning you have to tune re to pa so we know we have a trishruti rishabha is over there and here at if you take re, that rishabha as a sa and in the string of panchama if you can tune a madhyama sama you will get trishruti panchama like sama s 
sama you will you will get this madhyama is perfect according to this this note but when we will play the whole seven notes you will you can understand this pancham is not it's in its own position which position we understand regarding our ear that this is the perfect panchama it's not like that see so this panchama bharata mentioned in the name of chuta panchama or vikrata panchama this is the only vikrata swara so when panchama is going trishruti automatically just behind swara of panchama the exact next swara dhaivata you can listen little higher because panchama is durbal weak here so that's why dhaivata became four shruti so you will get dhaivata strong panchama is weak so this dhaivata is a four shruti swara but this four shruti swara is not in a relation of sa or, or dhaivata is relation is not coming here so dhaivata is a isolated swara here who has the four shruti so sama relation is there repa relation became sama then re dha relation is sapa and gani relation is sapa raise maximum the three like sama and repa this both relation are sama relation or navashruti distance it's coming so madhyama uh, samvaditya is increasing here that's why muni mentioned this is the madhyama grama so one is shardja grama another is madhyama grama anyone can ask a question is there any need to make a chuta panchama over here why because gandharva is very much concerned about pramana shruti one shruti distance is very important for gandharva exactly opposite in desi traditions in raga in any ragaanga kriyaanga bhasha vibhasha anywhere you can do mistake or you can uh, avoid one shruti distance but in gandharva one shruti distance is very important it's very vital so how you can understand one shruti distance how your ear perceive this one shruti distance easily if you not practicing the one shruti distance so that's why if you put shardja grama matta kokila vina and madhyam grama matta kokila vina if you play both the panchama differently you will get one shruti distance this panchama shardja grama is four shruti and madhyam grama is three shruti and one shruti less difference is over there and from there your ear being can be habituated regarding this one shruti distance it will be very uh, practicing thing to understand the one shruti distance this practice bharata mentioned to practice this he created an another new grama and the grama is madhyama grama so all the seven jatis based on these two gramas another one grama was there the name of that grama is gandh gandhar grama the gandhara grama you will get maximum swaras are trishruti so maximum swaras are oscillating so it's very difficult to sing when the maximum swaras are oscillating so that's why and in case of gandharva bharata mentioned it's not necessary to follow gandhara grama we can work on shardja grama and madhyama grama shardja madhyama is the basic thing and from here we can understand the raised musical things so the raised part of this music is jati gayan jati gayan is there are 18 jatis where the seven shuddha jatis are there based on the seven major notes sa re ga ma pa da ni so these seven jatis uh, is a very structured format why bharata mentioned jati because jati is the first structured music format where the dasha lakshana is very important 
a jati can teach you how to compose or how to write a proper song because in jati you will get graha amsa nyasa apanyasa in apanyasa later the sanyasa vinyasa came under apanyasa so graha amsha nyasa apanyasa tar mandra shadava audava albatva bahutva all these are coming under this dasha lakshana in this dasha lakshana which note is the first starting note that is the graha which note is dominating the whole uh, uh, whole uh, you know the notation or whole uh, that means particular musical piece that is the amsha then in which note we are going to rest that is nyasa and before going to rest which note is holding uh, the position that is apanyasa tar means the higher how which note should be the highest which note should be the lowest that is mandra which notes are very durbala alpatva it's a very weak note which notes are dominating maximum the amsha swara dominate the whole thing so that is the bahutva and if there are any shadavatva that means any omitting uh, one note i am omitting that is if any one note i am omitting in a orchestra uh, in a proper notation that means this is shadava if i am omitting two notes that is audava see till today in our raga tradition we are following this thing we till today these terminologies are there in today's raga system we used to so, uh, used to say that we have to do the nyasa in this swara so but the nyasa came now in shadja we used to start the our all the raga from shadja or we used to stay in shadja maybe we are starting in another not like kalyani or like yaman if we want to uh, sing it's just like na ra na te ta ra ji ra na nu so no i am standing in sa so sa maximum is the nyasa swara here but in case of bharata is not like that if there are mentioned in a karika that you have to start it from shadja and you have end up in gandhara or madhyama then you have to do the nyasa in madhyama or gandhara you have no other option you can't think that this is not melodious it's not the purpose of melody serving here it is talking about a science and it is very important so this is the tuning of madhyama grama here also all the murchanas are there shubhendu one by one can show the murchana and here also the practice of tana just he is showing the murchana here here the murchana is starting not from the nishad is starting from the madhyam and the first murchana is sauviri then harinashya which is coming from gandhar then rishabha is the first note kalopanata if madhyama is the first note that means shadja is the madhyama if madhyama i am taking about sa i am talking that madhyama is sa i started everything from madhyama ni if madhyama is uh, coming ni that means the sa will be in a descending manner that is shadja so that's why he bharata mentioned shadja from shadja of madhyama grama which murchana is coming the name of the murchana is shuddha madhya then from ni is margi Pauravi from Dha. And Rishyaka from Pancha. So, this is the Madhyama Grama tuning and Madhyama Grama's Matta Kokila Veena. And these are the several kind of practices we have to do. so these are the structure of jati i mentioned so like this way there are seven shuddha jati seven shuddha jati is based on these seven murchanas and all the 
Samkirna Jati is also depends on this Murchanas. So Murchana is actually the scale of the Jatis. If you are asking about any scale concept, these Murchanas are the scale of Bharata's system. When I am starting from Shadja, that is a, another scale. When I am starting from Panchama, maybe it's lower or upper, this is the scale is changing. So by this transposing system, gradually we are changing the scales. So this all you can be you have to be free in each and every scale. You have to you 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 have to float in each and every scale with your voice. So that's why Bharata's technique of practice music is a little bit different from today's any musical practices. Uh, so this is the Shadjagrama and Madhyamakrama. And to understand the Pramana Shruti, Muni mentioned the Madhyamakrama. And Pramana Shruti distance is very important in Gandharva and Avinashi Madhyama. We can't omit Madhyama anywhere in Gandharva. Now I am going to show the natural tuning Vipanchi Veena, which all this Veena we brought from Bama, Myanmar. And Pialda and Shubhendu, both of them visited there. They learned how to play this Veena. There, the Veena is surviving in the name of Saungok. But the Saungok structure is not same. They used to play maybe 14 string. 16, 16 string uh, their arts to this yeah. Veena. But this 16 string, string Veena, they used to play now in today's concept of music. Today's C scale, C sharp, C major, like this way they used to say. Their music also changed. But they know how to play the fingering, the plucking technique, the tapping technique, all is there surviving. So that's why Pialda and Shubhendu visited there. They uh, have given the structure of these uh, Veenas from the text. They painted in a big paper. They put it to the craftsman. Craftsman made these whole big Veenas and from there they brought it to India. Exactly in that time, we brought the Vipanchi Veena. Now they used to put the guitar peg over here to tune it. But once upon a time, there were the tied Dorika process, the terminology, Shastraic terminology is Dorika. That's why they put this red thread over here. But this red thread is only as a, as a decoration. But in that Vipanchi Veena, we can see by tying that thread, they used to tune the instrument. So we are going to demonstrate the Vipanchi Veena. So this is the Vipanchi Veena, you can see. And see all the threads, the Dorika is here. By tying it, you can open it one, one yeah. Dorika and show it. See, this is the string, nylon thread. And this is the Dorica part. He used to tie it here in the danda, which is solid. If you see, Samudra Gupta's coin, you will get this kind of vena in the coin. And that is a seven string maybe. So that is Chitra. And this is the nine string Vipanchi. So see how he is tying. So this is the time process 
of tuning here. This is called the natural tuning vena. Naturally, you have to buy time, the thread, you have to tune the vena. Yes. So this is the Vipanchi vena. And there is a, another uh, fingering is tapping. So, so all the Trishruti Kampanaswara, Rishabha or Dhaivata, we can tap like this and we can play. Yes. So this is the Vipanchi Vena. So we have worked on Alapini Vena, which is Chitra, one stringed stick, uh, Zitar, it's a one string only. The name of the Bharata's time that was the Ghosha Vena, the one stringed instrument. That Ghosha transferred in the time period of uh, Sharangadev, the name became Alapini. Alapini doesn't produce alap. The name derived from alavani. Alav means gold. One golden instrument. That's why it's the alavani. So from there, it's the alapini. So I got the uh, Ministry of Culture Fellowship, Junior Fellowship, to research this vena. And we worked on also the Kinnari vena. We visited Telangana with the tribe, pe tribal people, Telangana tribal people, they, they used to play this vina. Till today, they are surviving, the pochappa. One person was Balamma, who, who used to play also the Brihati Kinnari, but she passed away. Uh, but the pochappa is still surviving. He also, till now, uh, he's surviving and playing the instrument, the Kinnari vina. So, like this way, we work gradually from Bharata's vina to the medieval centuries Kinnari Vena, then to the Rudra Vena, the bamboo one Rudra Vena, which has the wax to fix the freight. We, they used to put the wax. This is the ancient process of making Rudra Vena. And Kinnari Vena also, they used to put the wax to fix the freight. So this chronology we are trying to connect or trying to join. Till now, we are working on all these things. So this is the Sharja Grama and Madhyama Grama. I'm not elaborating Jati here. I just mentioned Jati's structure and all that. So these are practices of Gandharva. And if anyone is coming as a student, so we used to teach with the Tattva, the technique with the Tattva. See, we better we say it's not a practice, it's a praxis. So Gandharva should be a praxis. So like this way, we are working, still working, and we are finding our own route. Thank you. That was actually a very brilliant presentation. We don't get to see this instrument or this system of music anywhere else uh, today. What I was reminded of was the yard from the Tamil region. Uh, when that was going on when Bharata system was prevalent. I think we had a unified system or very similar system all through the country and different instruments, but still similar system of music where the pun system was there in Tamil Nadu. Thank you very much for the demonstration. Now you mentioned in between about some Shankara Bharanam being similar, one uh, Raga being similar to, for example, one Murchana. What I would like to know is we are very proud that our system of music has come from Samagana. That is also accepted widely. Now, since this is Gandharvam, as you explained, it has a relationship with Samagana or at least some kind of relationship with the previous one, which is Samagana. And later on, right now, we have the Raga-based system of music, both in the north and the south. So how does it stand in between? What is the relationship, very briefly, with the Sama and then now today to the Raga system? See, Gupta mentioned one terminology which is very important. That is, Bhavanu Kirtanam, glorious retelling. 
we can't copy anything from anywhere so maybe bharata is telling that sami bhyam gitam eva cha jagraha pathya rigveda sami bhyam gitam eva cha in the first chapter of natya shastra but what thing exactly we can take from saman the thing is the tonality see till today we have several different kind of music musical traditions all they have their own tonalities like khayal has khayal's different tonality dhrupad has dhrupad's own tonality different different dhrupad gharana has their different different presentation the way of presentation is different so exactly thumri khayal in carnatic music all they have different different tonality so what is the tonality for Ga- gandharva that tonality we can get from this saman like uh, the tirishruti swara kampana i mentioned how much it will be kampana like re the if i sing like this way this is also a copy of carnatic process sari gama pada nisa it's a copy but i can't copy so from where i can get this kampana this kampana is surviving in samvedya shakhas whatever is surviving in uh, today's tradition if you practice you will get that you know better that like baha ara tim prithivya to baha ara ara is a very subtle kampana is over there and this subtle kampana is trying to reach between or oscillate between two shrutis only so this kampana we can take as a instance but we can copy so then ni da pa ma ga re da pa ma ga re ni so that that much kampana and when we are singing the tonality we can't sing ni da pa ma ga re this is another tonality so which tonality we should apply that is coming from samaveda so you have to practice samaveda to get that voice tonality how 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 ajado ham so this tonality you require then when you are singing automatically this resonate tvam bhava la la ta na ya nam buja kam so this is the shadji jati and why i am stroking like because harp is stroking like this way harp is not giving you a melted swara like with gamakas so only the kampana and exact note you are getting from the veenas matta kokila veena and you are getting the kachapi the small kampanas from kachapi veena so that's why you have to exactly execute that particular intonation through your voice that particular span of uh, swara uh, you have to execute so that's why tvam bhava la la ta na ya nam buja adhi kam you can kam so if i put the dhrupad tonality tvam bhava la la ta na ya nam buja can't be the tonality of gandharva and that's why the tonality exactly we can get from the samagana the research that goes on doesn't really concentrate on this aspect whatever i have read about the connection between sama and later music i think most people try to locate a raga in the ancient samagana that may be a stretch because the raga system evolved later on and then has various other aspects added and it is different from the jati system even though it has connection with that so how do the raga system 
how does the raga system compare uh, and what is the difference in brief with the jati system the difference is i mentioned the gandharva and the ganam exactly like this way the difference is ranjakatva when ranjayati iti ragah the raga means the color when the color of a particular season color of a particular emotion we are adding the total system is going towards the raga from the beginning the gram raga then bhasha vibhasha then raganga bhashanga kriyanga all are coming like this till today is kriyanga raga is surviving ramakri ramkeli we used to say gunakri gunakeli maybe the uh, structure uh, changed because these all uh, when the desi parampara is started floating it's change changing 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 and till today is changing this is the format of music but the marga tradition you have to understand it's a structure is talking about a gram so in that structure when you are singing you are practicing a particular structure to understand better the desi system you have to understand that the marga has one shruti restriction but not in the desi it's a totally individual process of practice so the ranjakatva is the main equipment in raga so by singing the raga you will get that ranjakatva and to create the ranjakatva we require gamakas so when the kinnari veena developed then gradually the raga system developed the gamakas developed so that's why i mentioned sari gama padani sa sanida pa magari magari so if i sing like this so this rishabha is not oscillating in two or four shruti this oscillating much but whatever it's oscillating this oscillation creating a essence but nida pa magari it's not creating the ranjakata it's just giving you a technique a technique of kampana that much so you can do a dhal Uh, or this hudak uh, all this gamaka di nur nar nar nu you can sing like this way in any kind of raga so the derivation is jati jati to the in between is a gandharva kalpa jati and all these are gandharva in gandharva kalpa we are getting the kapala gana kambola gana all this from there it's it's not exactly gram rag not exactly jati is a transition point from there it's deriving the gram rag and then gram to bhasha vibhasha we all know gradually like this way the whole tradition is coming out but jati is is a very scientific mathematical structure if you can understand jati it will be very helpful to understand today's music also that that is an interesting point actually today's people don't even recognize the jatis and find it very alien in nature but it has come from there so we have to understand that that is a source of it well thank you so much for this uh, session because it's a session which we really don't get anywhere usually it's from the textbooks that we read there is no way someone demonstrates it for us so thank you very much for uh, demonstrating and explaining the whole grama jati system for us brilliant demonstration as well as answering the question about how samaganam and later raga sangeetam is related to the jatis we don't really get to know the system that closely today it will be nice if you can show us a little bit of shat ji or some jati demonstration you already showed us some of the murchanas so i request you to do a small demo of a jati
Thank you.